Hello, this is Jeffrey Fox again, and we're on the second part of our broad discussion of cloud computing technology. And of course, its application to big data. We always have our favorite uh, rallying, rallying cry, using clouds, running data analytics, processing big data and solving problems in X informatics or EX, depending on how you how you want to phrase it. And because clouds is the second uh, word here, clouds are, are um, very important, so that's why we're covering them in this um, in this MOOC. And here are all these applications which clouds will enable. So now we go through a little more detail of what is cloud computing. Again, taking uh, often bunches of people's quotes from the internet, because cloud computing, as I mentioned, has lots of different definitions. And uh, by looking at how different people think about it, you can get a good impression about that, what the real situation is. Um, so if we look at this uh, slide here, uh, we already discussed server consolidation, that um, by using virtualization and using images, not with, on virtual, on hypervisors, we can do consolidation and uh, try to optimize the usage. Remember, there was an example from Microsoft where we moved from 10% and then we consolidated to make it 60% average ut ut um, utilization. And of course, we need both very large scale uh, use of computers, and we need it to be very dynamic and cope with the uh, uh, real time changes in, in utility. That's the elastic property um, of, of clouds. And of course, everything is being set up to uh, use clouds to, to build almost everything. And so uh, when this, this is a somewhat old slide, I would say today's web is the combined technology business and people collaboration platform. And clouds, when we view them as um, the place where smartphones and social networks and things collide and coordinate their um, activities. Uh, here, this post points out that um, we have a private cloud linked to a public cloud, and that's a hybrid cloud, and uh, that's um, that involves cloud bursting. That's a um, pretty useful concept. And uh, we do not know whether the private cloud will survive or whether everything will always move to the public cloud. But uh, there are certainly some cases where some for security or technical reasons you'd like to keep things in your private area and only move to the public cloud uh, occasionally. What fraction that occasionally is will depend on the application. Um, so this tells you the players in the field. We have the people like Amazon and Azure who are providing the basic infrastructure. Those same people providing basic infrastructure, at least Amazon and Azure, also provide platforms. Although other people also provide platforms, you could say the Hadoop community provides their platform called Hadoop. The MongoDB community provides that NoSQL resource and so on. And then we have, um, Various possible, so this is an area that might grow. Brokers, there's a lot of interest in the sort of an economy of clouds, where you might have multiple clouds and you will shop around maybe dynamically and automatically and show that at this moment in time, Google has the best offering and you know, an hour later, Amazon or Azure is better. We all know the importance of software as a service, because it's software as a service which enables X informatics. And of course, we have the users of these uh, different capabilities. The next set of slides are very lightweight. And uh, these, um, I just will go through them quite quickly. Uh, well, these are some features of cloud computing, cost, and at least uh, compared to a not, I mean, they may not be cheap compared to a fully utilized private cluster, but they're certainly cheap compared to a modestly used private cluster. And of course, you, 
in some sense is good. You don't have to provide system admins and worry about their human resources and and when they leave or go on vacation and things like that. So the flexibility of having somebody else run your infrastructure and that person doing it at a scale where some of these issues of fluctuations are, which are inevitable are not your problem are not difficult to solve if you have a big enough system that's good. And we know why elasticity is good. Sometimes you want a lot of computing just before a conference or or at a particular day when if you're a company when there's just not going to be a lot of access, the so-called Mother's Day effect, uh, that's uh, pretty useful. So we have, of course, on-demand business. So you have a startup, you set it up on the cloud. When you have more, you don't have to worry about your total use. If you suddenly uh, do very well, then you're going to be fine. If you don't do very well, well, you won't have to pay for those unused cycles. Um, so we're going to use um, pa parallelism, namely everything will. We're going to run MapReduce and other technologies to implement our, our jobs so that large jobs will split themselves up into lots of small jobs and run together. And um, we're going. We can do, of course, back up to the clouds, and that's uh, a. Uh, we do, at least I do that for my PC, and my smartphone does it without me asking. And backing up to the cloud is certainly a, a useful idea because it, as you can do it anywhere. When I travel, I can still back my PC up. At least as long as the internet connection is good where I travel. Some places where I travel, you can't back up my PC. At least my laptop, I meant, because the internet connection is lousy. Uh, <coughs> So we pointed out um, abstraction or virtualization, and uh, we use software as a service, and we use infrastructure as a service as the key abstractions. Uh, and this basically here we have applications that software as a service, middleware is platform as a service, and then we have service infrastructure as a service where we see the hardware, the hypervisor, and an operating system. With the operating system typically packaged with the application as a machine image. And we've already pointed out the importance of MapReduce, and that's a nice way of scaling on clouds to do large problems. This is a technology originally developed for commercial clouds, used still a lot in commercial clouds, but now becoming greater use in areas. And there are some problems which don't run MapReduce so well. That's why we introduce iterative MapReduce. And in some cases, uh, clouds just don't run very fast anyway. But these are all because we're still on the, coming down towards the trough of disillusionment. And we haven't quite got everything right. We've not deployed to more than 5% of the people. So we still have immature technology. This will all get solved. There's no reason for many of these problems to exist. Just we haven't been working on it long enough. And uh, we have things like, uh, these are people using Hadoop, Google, who also of course have the Google file system, which became HDFS, the Hadoop file system, when Yahoo developed Hadoop. And I, I assume all these other people certainly use Hadoop, or some equivalent languages. So what are the, some challenges with um, cloud computing? Well, we have to train ourselves to use it. That's why you're coming to this MOOC. Maybe you're taking the cloud computing course, which is part of the MOOC. We have to worry about lots of clouds. Amazon has one, Google has another. Uh, Azure has a different one. And they're probably gonna become more similar, but uh, there are some important differences, which means it's not so easy to move from one to the other. And I'm not quite certain why it's more expensive. Presumably what this says, if I run my cluster 24 hours a day and I have 100% utilization, my cluster is cheaper than the cloud. Because I'm not making a profit and I've optimized my cluster for my, for my use. Whereas clouds tend to have some feature of their pricing, so maybe the data transfer or um, just the machine availability, the machine, sizes available, which are not optimized for my application. 
I expect legacy applications to pull up pretty easily. There are not actually many standards yet in for our clouds, and I expect more to be developed. Um, we don't have a very clear set of service level agreements. Secure, some of these I'm not certain what workload affinity and, and service management imply. Security is um, obviously a key point of clouds. Uh, they have to be compliant with standards, which I'm meant to obey. At our universities, we don't have standards we're meant to obey. Image crawl is, uh, sprawl is certainly an issue. You generate lots of images, which are quite big, because they have the operating system in them. And managing those is important. Trojan virtual images is a part of security. We better make certain that we uh, vet our images and do not allow um, security uh, violations. And I'm not quite certain what he means by governance there. I pointed out what cloud bursting meant. It meant that we started off on one machine, and then we automatically moved to a cloud when we ran out of local resources. Hybrid clouds are when we probably, on a more ongoing basis, mix our use between a private system and a public system. An example could be uh, work at Indiana University by Haishu um, Tang and Xiaofeng Wang when they showed they could take gene processing which has to be kept pretty secure for human processing, human gene processing, and do the insecure part on a private cloud, and anonymize it so that the rest could be run, which is the dominant computing on a public cloud. Um, I'm not certain what the IBM term cloud spillage is, and I'm not convinced it's important to manage multiple clouds. That's uh, Some people think it is, though.